and receive this kind of love. He just loves my heart so well. I feel like I can press on at all. At all. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I, I wrote down my list of thank you so that I would not uh, forget what I wanted to say. I want to call these two people's names, and you will know them when I call them. Godfrey and Shirley Joseph. Yeah. Had it not been for them, there would be no Clark. My parents, my parents, my mother sacrificed for me to have parents. She sacrificed. She took me to those piano lessons. You heard Miss Kenny talk about them. Um, and I just believe she went without so that I could go with. And so I want to honor her. I want to honor my father because he went to Lafayette Music and got my first piano. And I thought I was the richest kid in the world because I had my own piano. Um, I want to thank the originators of this day. I want to thank my cousin, Clyde, who um, the Lord spoke to him to do this, and then Susanna, my, my cousin, another cousin, and then my family got involved. Thank you all so much for considering and thinking of me and putting this together. I appreciate you. And to all of my cousins, my cousins, my cousins, you are here uh, on, on the Joseph side. You're here. Come on, wave, wave your hands if you're on the Joseph side. If you're on the Bonaire side, raise your hand. Yes, yes, you are here. And then I have some friends from high school, class of 1979. Wait, all right, all right. You're here, you're here. Um, I work with several churches here in the city, Good Hope Baptist Church, Progressive Baptist Church, uh, Louisiana Avenue United Methodist Church, Queen of Peace Catholic Church. Um, I served those churches for many years uh, while I was here. Uh, before moving on. And so I thank you for allowing me the opportunity to hone my skills and now I can share what I learned right here in Lafayette with the world. And then uh, I want to take this time and I want to shift and I want to highlight and commend the teachers of Lafayette Parish School System. I am where I am in part because of the education I've received right here in Lafayette Parish. That deserves. <laughs> Miss Hall was my third grade teacher. You heard her speak. Mr. Hall was my seventh grade history teacher. They taught and they demanded excellence. And so what you see comes from where I got it from. <laughs> Louise Kenny, Mrs. Louise Kenny, took me under her wings. Um, and she didn't say this, but I'm going to say it. It was at a time where we were bused from our neighborhood to another neighborhood. But for Miss Kenny, it didn't matter. She gave her all and took interest in me and made sure that I was prepared to do whatever I needed to do. And that's why I keep in touch, because I'm so appreciative of your investment in me. Can we give it up for this community? <laughs> and then you heard Ms. Mathilda Martin speak. Um, she was one of my first musical influences, um, lived right across the street from me. Uh, she didn't tell this story, but I'm going to tell it. Every spring she did spring cleaning, and uh, she would have, have all of her music books that she no longer wanted. She would have, in those days, teachers wrote lesson plans in books, and she would throw away her lesson plan books. And I will never forget, she had a unit on the piano. She had the piano, a picture of the piano in her lesson book, and I took that lesson book and taught what I read, taught it to myself. So she was one of my first music teachers. And then I'm 
going to call this name. Some of you will know um, her by this name, Miss Lanetta Singleton. She's now Lanetta Singleton Mouton. Um, in the eighth grade, she taught me in the third grade, and then I went on to L.J. Alma, and then at her in the eighth grade at Paul Grove. And if you know, eighth grade is that um, pivotal time in a student's life. It's trying to decide, you know, okay, do I want to do this, do I want to do that? Well, I was always tall. I was always the tallest person in my class, and so most people thought I should have been an athlete, should have played basketball, um, but I was not athletic at all. <laughs> I made it through physical education because of the written part. <laughs> I could do the reports. I couldn't get the athletic skills now. But anyway, um, during that, that time in the eighth grade, I will never forget, um, I was having a difficult time. Students were laughing and the peer pressure was great. I wanted to fit in. I wasn't fitting in. And she pulled me aside. And she said, what do you want to do? And I said, I want to be a musician. She said, and if you want to be a musician, you work at it. I said, well, but everybody's laughing and everybody's criticizing. She said, do what you are called to do. And she said, let me tell you something. Now, here's the line that changed my life. She said, you may not be athletic. You may not be able to play basketball. You may not be able to play football. But guess what? The game cannot start until you play or you sing the national anthem. And those words changed my life. Because that, even though my parents were saying it, I needed to hear it from somebody else. And she gave me life yeah. with those words. And I've been living off of those words ever since. My choirs have sung for the Mavericks. They sung for the Rangers. They sung for all kinds of games. Yeah. And guess what? We got paid. <laughs> Not only that, some of those students who ridiculed and who laughed called me to play for their weddings. Called me to teach their children. Called me to play for funerals. And guess what? They paid me. <laughs> so I'm a living witness. If you stick with what you know that you're supposed to be doing, it will pay off. Um, I also want to call these names because they were great influences in my life. Some of you will know them. Early Pipkin. Early Pipkin and Teresa Ventroy Davis. They were my first musical influences in the church. I saw them Sunday after Sunday. And so that was what I heard. And I said, that's what I want to do. And so I want to call their names uh, in, in remembrance for what they invested in, what they poured into me. You heard Mrs. Kenny talk about Ethel Savoy. Ethel Savoy was my sixth grade homeroom teacher, and she called a conference with my, with my mother and my father. I had written an essay, something about what do you want to do, and I, of course I talked about music. And she convinced my father to get me a camera. Awesome. Ethel Savoy. Gloria Donahoe was another music teacher uh, who taught me piano in high school, enrolled me in contests. I won every scholarship uh, that I auditioned for. She got me um, an interview with her teacher, Madeline Tribble. Madeline Tribble uh, was the top piano teacher in the Department of Music at USL. Studied with her for four years, got my bachelor's degree, got my master's degree under her. I've kept in touch with her. She went on home to be with the Lord this year. And so I'm just so grateful that I've had an opportunity to say thank you uh, to the people who have poured into me. And Clyde, you, I could not have said it better. Um, my role at this point is to be the example for some young student to see that you can do some things. It matters not where you're from. It matters not what school you go to. If you work hard, you're going to rise to the top. You're going to rise to the top. I have been afforded the opportunity to go all over this world. Clark Joseph, Northside High School, 
Lafayette, Louisiana, mm -hmm. Europe, mm -hmm. all over the world. Mm -hmm. And so I'm appreciative of where I got started. Let me say that again. I'm appreciative of where I got started. It's because of what I, what I received here that I'm able to do what I'm able to do across the world. And so to God be the glory. I want to thank you for your presence uh, today. I have a lot of pictures uh, so that I can go back to Texas and say, now this is how you do it. This is how we do it in Louisiana. Uh, take note, take note. Uh, and so would you just do, do me one favor? Would you just turn to a neighbor, turn to a neighbor and say, neighbor, so it's been a joy and a pleasure to share with you. I trust and pray that the life of Clark Joseph will continue to impact. God bless you.